afternoon, man. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. All right, when I, when I talk to you, talk back. I like to have a little interaction. But I'm Coach Dancy. Um, going into my second season here, been coaching for the last 15 years. Um, been a head coach, been a defensive coordinator. But I look forward to working it with each and every last one of you, man. Um, everybody know what part of the season this is. We're going into grind. This is the this is the part this is the part of the year where you get better, where you take your game to the next level, and it's gonna be hard. It won't be easy. This is the part of the season where you grind, and we're gonna push you to be the best that you can be. Everybody understand that, right? Everybody know what you came here for. Everybody know the opportunity that's ahead of you. Take full advantage of the opportunity and make sure you're not shortcutting it or cheating these guys that's sitting in the seat next, right beside you. Because everybody got to depend and trust everybody that's in it, including the coaches. So make sure everybody's on the same page. Same page? Yes, sir. Same page? Yes, sir. Same page? Yes, sir. Same page. Yes, sir. That's it. Appreciate you, man. Coach Vincent Dancy was born on March 10th, 1984, in Sugarlock, Mississippi, a small town of 512 people where no one is a stranger. Sugarlock didn't have a single stoplight, just one stop sign, a grocery store, and a post office. The town is in Noxaby County on US Route 45, midway between Columbus, Mississippi and Meridian, just south of Macon, Mississippi, home to the Sugarlock Lumber Company, one of the largest privately owned independent producers of Southern Yellow Pine in the Southeastern United States. For high school, Coach Dancy attended Noxaby County, where he was a multi-talented athlete who played receiver, cornerback, safety, and return kickoffs and punts. He was a member of the Clarion Ledger Top 40 recruits list in his senior year of high school. He drew interest from MSU, Ole Miss, and Memphis. He has 78 tackles, six interceptions, five touchdown catches, and two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Dancy arrived at Jackson State as a highly sought after cornerback and played every position on the Tiger defense except defensive tackle. He redshirted his first season in 2002 and began his playing career at JSU in 2003 at cornerback, moved to safety, and then moved again to linebacker when James Bell took over as coach. Dancy packed on 10 to 15 pounds and excelled at the position. In his third game, after he moved to linebacker, he was named Southwestern Athletic Conference's Defensive Player of the Week with 12 tackles, eight solo, two tackles for loss, and a pass deflection in the loss against Alabama State. JSU defensive coordinator Greg Johnson said, it was a big transition for him, one he really didn't want to accept at first, but now he's having a lot of fun. He's our best blitzer coming off the edge. Dancy remained at linebacker for two seasons before requesting to be moved back to safety. After the position change through six games, Dancy led JSU and ranked second in the SWAC in tackles with 66, 42 solo. The two schools are just 90 miles apart, but when Alcorn State and Jackson State meet, you can throw the records out the window for this interstate rivalry in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to very chilly football nation here at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson. I am Jonathan Coachman, and today for Alcorn State, they come into the game 5-4, and four, trying to have a fourth straight winning season under head coach Dr. Johnny Thomas. As for Jackson State, they are a program in disarray. Mid-season, head coach James Bell was let go. Interim head coach Daryl Jones is 0-2 since he took over. Jackson State has lost six straight games heading into their season finale here this afternoon. We'll bring in now my tag team partner, my partner in crime, 12-year Pro Bowl cornerback for the Atlanta Falcons. Big play, Ray Buchanan and Ray in a game like this at the end of a season. This really tests the character for the players on the field. Everything is going great when you're winning games. The attitudes are great. Players are having fun. But right now, testing the characters when you're having a losing season, speaking of Jackson State, that's when you find out who your real player is going to step up and what guys are going to lay it down. So we're going to find out today who's going to actually go out there and play. For Jackson State, it's going to be their job to stop these two guys. Who's a big play guy for the Tigers? Well, he's not Ray Lewis, but he's definitely trying to kiss close to doing it. Whenever you can get 23 tackles you know, in one game, not two games, 23 tackles in one game, that got a lot to say for a player. He also had 98 tackles, 58 so we'd like to see what this guy can do versus Jackson State. Well, I want to see what everybody can do. We're just about ready.
ready to get started. You see the Tigers are ready. You can hear the band is ready. The fans are cold, but they're ready. We're ready to kick off is next. Let's take a look, a real quick look at the Bud Select starting defense for Jackson State. Colvin, Billis, Manigan, and Scott up front for the defensive line. I'm going to have to stop Jeremy McCoy. Linebackers Hartnett, Woods, and Lewis. And then the secondary, Brown Smith, Dancy. We talked about him off the top. And Bozeman. And now a very, very unorthodox setup for Alcorn State. Well, this can be very confusing right now. They're throwing a screen play. Well, they throw it out to the wide receiver. That's Stiller. He's going to go inside the 45, down to the 42. And they have their entire offense, Ray, spread out over the course of the entire field. That's something you got to prepare for on film. You film study, everybody goes and spread everything out. They try to start a little a confusion. But here, as you throw a little, you know, just a, a little screen play out to the wide receiver. Look like almost like a little cowboy collar there that would be illegal in the NFL. Yeah, the play went for eight yards. Good down to the 42-yard line of the Tigers. This is going to bring up a third down and one for the Braves. Now third down and four for the Braves. Another big third down conversion needed this time. They're going to run the shovel pass and a beautiful play call. Inside the 20, down to the 15, down to the 11. And that was Oliver Bozeman again. And this guy, they've used the two of the last three plays. And now Alcorn State knocking on the door again, down to the Jackson State 10. That was a nice play by Bozeman. He's, nice cut, nice little shovel pass. Play to keep Jackson State off balance. Great hit by Maurice Hardman, but he didn't get there in time. And as you can see right here, right towards the end, Vincent Dancy comes up and delivers a nice little blow. Tony Hobson. Two. Now Hobson keeps it, and he's got all kinds of guys out. He throws it into the end zone, and it's intercepted. Yeah, intercepted man. in the end zone by Jackson State, and there's your guy there's you talked man. about. <laughs> Vincent Dancy Vincent comes up Dancy. with a big play there. Great play because you know what Alcorn right now they're in, sitting in the red zone area to come in to punch it in and Vincent come up with a great play that was hot that so, was nice so Alcorn stayed a missed field goal now an interception in the end zone so we are still scoreless late in the first quarter with the interception now in the end zone turning Alcorn State away well, they had a nice little rollout play, and he, the quarterback got to set his feet. If you don't set your feet and then you're throwing across the field, something bad's going to happen. Vincent Dancy made him pay for it. Vincent Dancy headed into his senior season in 2006 with aspirations of leaving Jackson State University as one of the most prolific defensive players in school history. The season prior, he had 105 total tackles. Dancy solidified himself and new head coach Rick Kamaji's defense as a hybrid safety. Coach Kamaji's defensive philosophy used Dancy much like the Pittsburgh Steelers used Troy Palomalu. Dancy obtained his bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Jackson State University in 2006, where he was also a standout student athlete. A four-year letterman in football, Dancy was also an all-swag performer at linebacker and safety. Vincent Dancy was added to the Spokane Shocks Arena Football as a wide receiver and defensive back in December of 2007 for the 2008 season. At his pro day workout, Dancy recorded a 4-5 in the 40-yard dash and was rated 31st out of all safeties by NFL Draft Scout. Dancy is a very aggressive safety who will allow us to do some different things in our secondary. Shock coach Adam Shackleford said, we were very surprised that he did not get an NFL shot, but we are pleased that he is joining our roster. The Spokane Shock was a professional indoor American football team based in Spokane, Washington, that played their home games at the Spokane Veteran Memorial Arena. Dancy earned a master's in 2008 from West Alabama in Livingston, Alabama in counseling and psychology. From 2009 to 2011, Coach Dancy was a graduate assistant at Jackson State, coaching the outside linebackers, and earned a second master's in physical education. In 2012, Coach Dancy became the full-time safeties coach, a position he held until 2013. In 2012, Jackson State secondary led the conference in takeaways with 10 interceptions. They were also ranked number one in total defense. I'm pleased to announce that Payne College is reviving the football team to start play in the fall of 
In 2014, Coach Dancy had a one-year stint at Payne College in Augusta, Georgia as the defensive coordinator. The Lions defense finished ninth in Division II national ranking in pass defense in the school's first year of football in 50 years. In 2015, Coach Dancy became the defensive coordinator at Mississippi Valley State under his former head coach at Jackson State University and mentor, Rick Comagy. 2014 season, Comagy was the head football coach at Mississippi Valley. After four years and only six wins overall, the once coach on top of the world found himself once again without a job. Don't be mad at what somebody else does, because that's their thing. That's the AD's thing, and that was the president's thing. You know, that was everything that they do. You know, I'll find my way. You know, so, um, I, you know, and just because I really feel that God didn't bring me all this distance to drop me off here. While Vincent Dancy grew up as a child rooting for Mississippi Valley State, being that his dad, along with his six aunts and uncles, are all graduates of MVSU, little did he know back then that someday he would run the school's football program. Well, that someday is today. Dancy officially shedding his one month long interim tag for head coach. Without further ado, Please welcome our impact coach for Mississippi Valley State University, Coach Vincent Davis. It's a dream come true. It's an opportunity of a lifetime, and I mean, it's, it means the world to me. And it came so quick. After serving as Valley's defensive coordinator for the last three years, Dancy gets the bump up to head coach at the tender age of 33. I don't necessarily put age on anyone's ability to be successful because it has to be desire. It has to be a commitment within that you believe that you can be a difference maker. So I had to say to myself, why not Coach Dancy? Why not? And when I think about it, I'm just elated that he is our new head coach. I know it's gonna be a tough challenge, but I'm up for the challenge. Um, I'm um, a young man and um, all I have to do is get out and work and regain and reconnect our alumni and, our, and, and the community base. It's going to take a team effort to what we're trying to do here, and we need everybody on board to try to get this thing moving in the right direction. But besides energy and enthusiasm that Dancy brings here to the Valley, another factor that weighed in his favor, the support he got from Valley players, in particular from one key returnee. When I sat down and talked to Booker T. Chambers, he helped influence my decision. You know, sometimes we have to listen to our student athletes and hear their voice. And I want our student athletes to understand that their voice is important to me. I love those guys in the locker room. I've been with them for the last three seasons. And if anybody was going to be the head coach, I wanted to make sure it was me. Now, Dancy is a JSU grad and former all-swack defender. This is his first head coaching job on any level, and he replaces his longtime mentor, Rick Comagy, whose contract was not renewed after four seasons. Let's Indiana. talk about Rick Comagy. You coached under him. How man, much did you learn from him? Man, uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't be where I am today without Coach Comagy. Uh, I always pay homage to coach everywhere I go. Uh, I can just remember being a young coach, you know, um, and that's when you was really a young coach where you was with all the old guys. And he took me on his wing. You know, um, I went everywhere with him when it came to games. Even if he had to go to a press conference early, he took me with him to, to, to show me the, the professional side, the, the, these type moments side. So, man, I, and, um, you know, you never know football until you become a coach. Because when you're playing, you're just playing the game. You really don't understand the concepts, the X's and O's, as they say, about the game. And, he showed me so much about the game, and um, I always pay homage and respect to him. I love him to death because, like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't without him. For, if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Right, Mississippi Valley State announced today head coach Vincent Dancy has resigned to join Coach Prime staff in Colorado. Dancy was an All SWAC linebacker and safety for Jackson State in the early 2000s. He was 9-38 and 38 in his four seasons with MVSU while dealing with what the university in a statement today called limitations regarding scholarships. Under Dancy, MVSU was not able to supply the maximum number of scholarships allowed in the FCS, unlike most of their opponents in the SWAC and beyond. Before Jackson State hosted the Devils earlier this season, Coach Prime had high praise for his then SWAC rival and now new assistant. I admire him. 
I pray for him. Uh, I love him dearly as a brother. And I wish I could help him even more. So with the tribulations and the trials that he has uh, there. We developed a relationship that was that's that was, that's just pure genuine. Um, and he he accepted me, and you know um, I accepted him. He took me on his wing just to teach me and help me grow in my profession, uh, meet people that I probably would have never met before. He's a man of his word. He's a man of his word. Um, everything that he told me he was gonna do for me, he's done it. And um, it's just it, you know he blessed me with a great opportunity, and I feel like. This is the opportunity that I've always wanted, is to enhance my career. At this moment, it's time for me to, you know, spread my wings and fly out of Mississippi for, for the first time in my life, really, and, uh, you know, go be successful somewhere else. Everybody look around, we got a good group. We just got to keep this group together. But in order for us to stay together, that means we got to do things together. Holding each other accountable is one. Not letting nobody slack off is the other. You only good is the guy next to you. And make sure everybody understand that. It's a brotherhood, it's a family. And make sure we take care of each other. And that's on both ends, on and off the field. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. So hold each other, hold each other accountable, man, because that's what I'm going to do to you, all right?